The divergence test, or nth term divergence test, states that for the infinite series, the sum from n equals to one to infinity of a sub n, if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n doesn't equal zero, then the series diverges. It's important to note but if the limit does equal zero, we do not know if the series converges or diverges. The divergence test can never be used to show convergence. We are asked to consider the given infinite series, apply the divergence test, and see if the test tells us if the series diverges, converges, or might converge, or might diverge. Remember, we just said we can never use the divergence test to show convergence. To apply the divergence test, we need to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is six n squared, divided by the quantity two n cubed plus five. There are several ways to determine this limit. One way is to look at the degree of the numerator and denominator. We'll notice the degree of the numerator is two, the degree of the denominator is three. Because the denominator has a higher degree, as n increases, the denominator increases faster, and therefore the fractions get smaller and smaller and approach zero, and therefore this limit is equal to zero. Another way to determine the limit is to divide each term by the highest power of n from the denominator. Let's also show this method. We would have the limit as n approaches infinity of six n squared divided by n cubed, divided by the quantity two n cubed, divided by n cubed, plus five divided by n cubed, and now simplifying, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of, this simplifies to six divided by n, and then here we have n cubed divided by n cubed, which gives us one, two times one is two, plus five divided by n cubed. From here, as n approaches infinity, six divided by n approaches zero, and so does five divided by n cubed, because in both cases, the numerator is a constant, and the denominator increases without bound. And therefore, this simplifies to zero divided by two, which once again is zero. But because this limit is equal to zero, we do not know if the series converges or diverges, and therefore we select might converge or might diverge. Another way to verify this limit would be to graph the terms of the series given by a sub n. So let's also look at this. Here are the first 20 terms given by a sub n. Notice how as n approaches infinity, the terms are getting smaller and smaller and approaching zero. Let's look at a second example. Same question, different series. To apply the divergence test, we need to find the limit as n approaches infinity of four n to the fifth divided by the quantity three n cubed plus five. Looking at the degree of the numerator and denominator, notice how here the degree of the numerator is five and the degree of the denominator is three. In this case, as n approaches infinity, because the numerator has a higher degree, the numerator increases faster than the denominator and therefore the fractions get larger and larger and approach infinity. This limit approaches infinity, which does not exist. Another way to determine this limit would be to divide each term by the highest power of n from the denominator, which is n cubed. And again, let's also show this. We have four n to the fifth divided by n cubed, divided by the quantity three n cubed, divided by n cubed, plus five divided by n cubed. Now simplifying, here we have four n squared, divided by here, n cubed divided by n cubed is one, three times one is three, and we have plus five divided by n cubed. As n approaches infinity, four n squared gets larger and larger and approaches infinity. Three is not affected by n, and five divided by n cubed approaches zero. So the values approach infinity divided by three, which is just infinity, the limit approaches infinity, which does not exist. But because the limit does not equal zero, we can conclude from the divergence test that the series diverges. And again, to confirm this limit, let's look at the terms of the series given by a sub n. 
Here are the first eight terms of the series. Notice how as n increases, the terms get larger and larger and approach infinity. Let's look at one more example. Once again, it's the same question, different series. To apply the divergence test or nth term divergence test, we need to determine the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is 4n to the fifth divided by the quantity 6n to the fifth plus 5. Let's first find the limit looking at the degrees. Notice in this case, the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, they're both five. When this is the case, the limit is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which in this case would be four divided by six, or four sixths, which is equal to two thirds. Let's also show the second method of dividing each term by the highest power of n from the denominator, which in this case would be n to the fifth. We would have four n to the fifth divided by n to the fifth divided by the quantity six n to the fifth divided by n to the fifth plus five divided by n to the fifth. Well, n to the fifth divided by n to the fifth is one here as well as here. And therefore the numerator simplifies to just four. In the denominator we would just have six plus five divided by n to the fifth. As n approaches infinity, four and six are not affected by n, but five divided by n to the fifth approaches zero, and therefore the limit is equal to four sixths, which once again is two thirds. But because two thirds is not equal to zero, once again we can conclude from the nth term divergence test that the series does diverge. Before we go, let's look at the graph of the terms given by a sub n to verify the limit of two thirds. Here's the graph of the first 10 terms of the series. Notice how very quickly as n increases, the terms do approach a value that does appear to be two thirds. I hope you found this helpful.